All right. Well, welcome. Uh, my name is Nick Early. I'm an orthopedic surgeon with OrthoSensi. And we're going to be talking about partial knee replacements today. And the uh, subtopic is, is it right for you? So we'll go through a lot of different things and, um, you know, determine if whether or not this is something that may be appropriate for you. So first, just to start off, um, just to share something, I do work in conjunction with the Christ Hospital. The Joint Spine Center there is really a world-class facility. Um, I can't say enough about it in terms of just the actual physical facility, but also the way that the organization supports uh, surgeons and uh, medical teams and everything and really takes great care of patients. Uh, I absolutely uh, love it there as a surgeon, but I, my patients love it even more. So it's something that's really fantastic. I'm really lucky to be a part of the organization uh, with that, that said. And honestly, I encourage you to look into more uh, information on it just because it is a pretty fantastic place. We're lucky to have the, the facility in Cincinnati. So just to start off with some things, um, I can't see any of the, uh, the chat information yet. We'll go ahead and um, you can type questions in and we'll go through some questions at the end. Um, if you're having any uh, technical difficulties or anything, put those in the chat box as well, but you can't speak to me. That makes sense. This is being recorded. So if there's anything that I say that's of interest and you wanna go back and get some more information, um, feel free to go back and check it out or whatever, but we'll, we'll be putting it up on, um, on the internet for later on for if you need to go back and look at anything or if you need to send it to somebody later on if you think it's of interest to them. So just to start off, I don't have any financial disclosures uh, related to this or any conflicts of interest related to this topic. Um, this is meant to just be educational for, for uh, patients or for anybody who may be interested in this type of thing. Uh, once again, if you're interested in it and you think someone else may be interested in it, feel free to, to share it wherever. Um, this is, is just meant to kind of get some information out there and hopefully give you something to think about. So just a little bit about me. Um, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Um, I specialize in sports medicine, or at least that's what I did my fellowship training in. Now, interestingly, in orthopedic surgery, about 90% of people plus uh, do a fellowship, which is an additional one year in, a, in addition to our residency training where we specialize in, in certain types of procedures. So for me, I do a lot of arthroscopic surgery and a lot of things related to a, acute injuries. Um, however, myself uh, included, many other orthopedic surgeons kind of do a lot of different things. And so I also am board certified in general orthopedic surgery. That includes, you know, doing things like joint replacements and fracture care and all sorts of different things. And so, um, although we do all oftentimes have our uh, subspecialties or things we really spend a lot of time in, for myself, that's knee and shoulder surgery. Um, there's a lot of different things that we, we kind of work together with. And so at OrthoSensi, I'm really lucky because we have the full spectrum of orthopedic uh, care. I have great partners who can help me out in areas where it's something where they do more of and I do less. And um, that's really the benefit of being part of a, of a large multi-subspecialty group uh, like I am. So just to kind of give a little bit more about myself personally, uh, I, I really enjoy a lot of different things. Sports, of course, as I mentioned, I'm uh, into sports medicine, but uh, I really enjoy watching sports, playing sports, always grew up playing sports, uh, competed in sports. Uh, in terms of like high school sports, I still uh, love to go and cover high school sports teams. I'm the team physician for Turpin High School. Um, it's something I really enjoy doing. I have a great family. I'm very lucky. I have a wonderful wife and kids, uh, great family, friends, and uh, that's very important to me. I'm really into outdoor activities. That's something I've really got into more and more as I've uh, gotten a little bit older. I really love hiking, camping, all, all sorts of stuff like that, skiing uh, included in there. And I really am into, interested in history. I like to uh, kind of get out and learn different things about different parts of the world and especially uh, our great country. Uh, so, you know, I guess just to let you know a little bit about that. We'll kind of start off talking about a patient. And this may sound familiar to some of you. Um, you may have been this person at one point or another. Um, a lot of times it's good to kind of start off with, okay, you know, what exactly is the problem here? And, you know, how's this type of start? So let's just say a 51-year-old, person comes into our office. Uh, they've been having some knee problems. They had a meniscus tear uh, when they were 15 years old. So they had an injury when they were a teenager to their knee, maybe had surgery, maybe did not. Did okay for a while, but over the last 10 years has had progressive knee pain. Uh, it's just gotten worse to the point where now it's bothering them on a daily basis. They have pain when they're standing. 
they have pain when they're you know getting up from a chair, you know, pain with activities. Maybe they just can't exercise the way they used to. And in this case, let's say that's medial sided pain, which means pain only on the inside part of your knee, kind of in the middle of the knee. Um, here, this would be a, an example of an X-ray of somebody who may come and, and show up. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the things we see here in just a second. So just to kind of go through a uh, normal knee and just to kind of go over some basics. So that way we have uh, kind of a ground uh, base laid just to go through some of the other information. Um, the knee joint is, is made up of a couple different surfaces that are contacting each other. So you have the end of the femur bone, the top of the tibia bone, which is your shin bone, and then your kneecap, your patella, is gliding in there as well. And there's cartilage on the end of the bone, which is kind of the shiny stuff on the end of the chicken bone that you see. Um, there are ligaments which connect the bones together. There are some of the structures called the meniscus, which are these little cartilage cushions, which are very important for cushioning of our knee joint, but also stability and some other stabilizing structures and things that help with uh, health of the joint and some other things along there. Uh, on the, the uh, right side of the screen, what you see there is an X-ray of a knee, and that'd be like a healthy looking knee. So what you see on an X-ray is you can make the outlines of the bone out. We can actually tell a lot from an X-ray just looking at the spacing as well. So what you see is almost like a black space between the ends of the bone. That tells us where there's cartilage, where there's cushioning in the knee. If you have less space in between the x-ray, uh, in between the bones on the x-ray, you have less cushioning, less cartilage. And that tells us that there's breakdown in the joint. So just to kind of go through that, what is arthritis? So most of the time when we're talking about arthritis, we're talking about osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is kind of the wear and tear type of arthritis that you see uh, most frequently. You can think about this as kind of the process of the wear and tear, a process of the breakdown of the joint. I like to tell uh, patients that it's kind of like tread on, on your tires wearing down. You see breakdown in the cartilage, the meniscus, which are those cartilage cushions can become degenerative and, and torn. And also eventually the bone starts to become involved. Um, if you look at the picture there, what you see uh, is on the left, a healthy looking knee where there's a nice smooth cartilage surface. There's meniscus cushions there. And then if you look on the right, you know, it looks bumpy on the edges of the bone. Those are, are things we call osteophytes or little bone spurs. The cartilage or that white surface may be worn down to where there's actually bone exposed. And like I said, a lot of times the meniscus can actually be damaged uh, as well along with that. Um, now looking, there's other types of arthritis as well. For instance, there's inflammatory arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Those are uh, usually caused by an autoimmune condition. That leads to inflammation in the joint, which can cause breakdown in the, the bone cartilage uh, and the meniscus tissues as well. Um, there's kind of different, different things in that big category. And then oftentimes, and this is another type of arthritis we see called post-traumatic arthritis. And this is a very common thing as well. So for imagine that somebody had a, um, a fracture or a break uh, in one of the bones around their knee. So for instance, their, the top of their tibia bone is called the tibial plateau. So if somebody had a fracture there, a break when they were they were younger, and then over the course of time, that uh, fracture can actually lead to, you know, like breakdown of the joint as well. Um, and somebody can end up with arthritis. So if you look at the x-ray here, once again, just to reiterate, we're looking at an x-ray, we see a nice space between the bones. Um, that's where there's some cushioning, some well, you know, well-maintained cartilage. And then if you look at the image on the right, you see decreased space. You see kind of rough edges, increased density or whiteness. That's kind of telling us that that joint is in bad shape and that's arthritis. So how do we treat arthritis? Because this is kind of the scourge of, uh, you know, orthopedic surgeons. You know, the, the holy grail in orthopedic surgery is, is really trying to cure arthritis. And that's something that no one's really, you know, close to doing yet. You know, obviously people are working towards that, but we'll see. Right now we treat arthritis. And the way we treat arthritis, we start with things like oral medications, anti-inflammatory medications, um, acetaminophen or what's known as Tylenol uh, most of the time is, you know, can help with pain, some, some other oral medications. Uh, there's topical things that you can use. Um, there's a lot of different over-the-counter topical things. There's a million different, you know, products out there. And, um, you know, a lot of times with those, it's kind of a trial and error thing to see which ones work best for you and how long they work for. There are some supplements that have been studied to some extent with mixed results, uh, most notably chondroitin and glucosamine have had some success in, in various uh, studies showing that they can help people's arthritis symptoms. And we do a lot of injections as well. And, and once again, like I said, this is kind of to treat the symptoms of arthritis. Um, you know, we do a lot of corticosteroid injections. 
which help with arthritis symptoms. Oftentimes you'll hear about gel injections, um, which are uh, hyaluronic acid, which is something your body naturally makes, but this is a synthetic version of it that we're doing to help with arthritis symptoms. Um, we often do PRP injections now. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. This is basically, um, we take peripheral blood and kind of separate the components of it, and we can inject the platelets uh, in the plasma that, that kind of produce a lot of growth factors and help with inflammation and arthritis symptoms. There are situations in which bone marrow aspirate concentrate or BMAC, which is basically taking a bone marrow um, a sample and then spinning that and, and kind of separating the components of it can be helpful for arthritis symptoms. Rarely does it come to that in my practice. Um, oftentimes we'll try bracing. In certain situations, bracing can be very effective, especially if there's an alignment issue. And physical therapy is kind of a mainstay of non-operative treatment as well. So those are all kind of, we'll throw all these things at somebody if they're having arthritis symptoms and see, you know, what can we help them and you know, how can we help them feel better uh, with that type of treatment? But what if that doesn't work? So that's where things become problematic. And this is um, you know, something that many of you may have experienced. Um, that's when you start hearing the word surgery thrown around. And sometimes it's very uh, frightening to people and you know, rightfully so. I, I understand that you know, that can be a big uh, you know, barrier to cross. Is this something I wanna do? Am I really gonna have a big you know, surgery on my knee? This isn't really convenient right now, that type of thing. And um, that's something where, you know, that's, a, that's a, a thing to really discuss and think, is this time right for you? And, and we'll kind of go through whether or not that's the case, uh, you know, and it's something to think about. We'll give you some, uh, some things to, to go through here. So why do we do surgery? Well, you know, most notably is when non-operative stuff is not working. So that's the first thing. You know, honestly, the, the biggest indication for surgery is failure of non-operative treatment. So first we try all those other things because if you do really well with injections, we may never have to get to surgery. And that's, you know, honestly uh, what we hope, but oftentimes uh, that's not the case. So if somebody is not doing well with non-operative treatment, we can hope to improve their quality of life. And that's what we're really hoping with surgery is not just to, you know, treat an x-ray or treating somebody's symptoms, trying to make them have a better quality of life. Oftentimes when people are ready for surgery, you know, they'll come and talk to me and be like, Hey, you told me I would tell you when it was ready because, you know, when I'm ready to do this because my knee is just going to get worse and worse. And, and that's often what they'll tell me. They'll be like, you were right. Now I can't even go to the grocery store without, you know, significant pain. I think it's time. Um, and our, our secondary hope is we're really trying to improve their overall health by getting somebody up and moving, improving their, improving their mobility. That's really important as you age, you know, making sure that you're maintaining your mobility, you know, gives you a lot of independence as we age. So sometimes, uh, improving somebody's ability to exercise or just be independent, you know, will really carry on uh, as they age. So what things do we consider when we're talking about surgery? So um, there are some important factors that go into whether or not somebody's a candidate for surgery. For instance, do they have a lot of medical risk factors? Do they have a significant, you know, cardiac history? Did they have a stroke recently? Um, how old are they? You know, we don't want somebody to be too young to be doing something like a knee replacement. We also don't want somebody to be too old and there's, you know, risk for just for things that we wouldn't otherwise want to put them through if we can hopefully treat them non-operatively. Um, what's their activity level? Is this worth doing? Are they too active? Is it a situation where if, you know, um, somebody's, you know, a really, you know, big time um, power lifters or something along those lines, and they want to be deadlifting 500 pounds, if we try to, you know, treat them with a knee replacement, they can end up doing some damage to themselves. So there's a lot of things we have to kind of take into account. And there's some other important factors that, um, you know, to minimize uh, complications. So for instance, if somebody's weight at a healthy level, are they currently smoking? And do they have the proper uh, social support to go through this and do well? The recovery, the, you know, I always tell patients that, that, you know, doing well after surgery is based on a few different things. The surgery itself, how they heal and how their body does, and also are they able to do the rehab that there is necessary afterward? And without that, that last part, you know, oftentimes people won't do as well as they want. And so we really want to make sure that they are set up for success before we go forward. So what surgery is right for you? And this is where we get into a few different things. You know, oftentimes I do a lot of knee arthroscopy um, and then knee replacements. Um, arthroscopy can be appropriate in certain situations. Once you get into the situation where you have more significant arthritis, it rarely is. And um, arthroscopy is a very uh, minimally invasive easy procedure for, you know, me and the, the patient, but sometimes it's not appropriate. And that's where you get into looking at replacement surgery. And replacement surgery is a bigger surgery, um, but it's something that 
you know, over time has become more and more streamlined and efficient in terms of how we can do it, how we can get patients to recover well. And now there's, you know, better and better technology allowing us to do this in ways that is really advancing, you know, outcomes. And that's what we'll kind of get into topic, talking a little bit about uh, some of that. What you see there listed is total knee replacement and partial knee replacement. And we'll kind of uh, detail partial knee replacement. Partial knee replacement may be something many of you hadn't heard of before. Um, oftentimes, you know, we'll, we'll kind of talk about this with patients and they'll be like, oh, I didn't know that was, you know, even a possibility. And then other times all patients come in and ask whether or not it's, it's something that they're a candidate for. So I wanted to kind of get this information out there and, and hopefully, um, you know, give you something to think about. Sometimes it's not, it's not appropriate, but many times it is. So who's a candidate for a partial knee replacement? Well, this would be somebody who has arthritis in just one compartment of their knee. When we say compartment, we mean one section of the knee. So kind of the inside part of the knee, the outside part of the knee, or behind their kneecap. Um, they also have to have alignment that is correctable, meaning something that we that is either normal, their knee is well aligned already, or we can we can fix it. You know, they don't have too tight of a knee, they don't have too many contractures around their knee. They also need to have stable ligaments. Um, and we'll kind of talk about a little bit about that before, but um, you keep all your ligaments when you have a partial knee replacement. Um, there are some other things that are important, like we mentioned the health criteria or some other things that we want to make sure that those are all uh, met as well, because partial knee replacement, although it is a less uh, invasive surgery than a total knee replacement, is still a big surgery, uh, and all those same uh, concerns apply in terms of health. So what's it look like? So, you know, if you look at it, basically you look at the inside part of the knee, and there's arthritis in the inside part of the knee, we're just going to replace that inside part of the knee. So for instance, you look at that x-ray, what you see is that white part is the metal. That is the metal that has now been put into the knee and is, is um, laying intimately in the bone there. And there's actually a polyethylene component between there where you see the space. Um, that polyethylene is a type of plastic that basically is extremely durable and wears well and acts as the joint surface then. Uh, here's another uh, view just looking at, for example, um, arthritis that's just behind the kneecap. So if you look at that x-ray there, on the left, you see a well-preserved space between the kneecap and the, and the femur bone. And on the right, you see that that's worn down. There's no space. There's spurs coming off the bone. That's showing us that there's just arthritis behind the kneecap. So what are the advantages? Well, why would you do a partial knee replacement? Well, oftentimes it's less painful because it's not as invasive as surgery. We're not removing as much bone. We don't have to um, you know, make as big of an incision. It oftentimes leads to a quicker recovery in terms of getting back to your uh, activities of daily living. There's less blood loss, less risk of complications related to the, you know, the surgery itself. And because of that, um, there's a little bit lower chance of infection or blood clots. And oftentimes, this is one thing that's really important, especially for younger patients, is it feels more like a natural knee, meaning um, it may feel more stable with activity. You know, if somebody is, is really active or, or likes to get out and, and um, do some kind of sports activities, it may uh, feel more like their, their knee did before they had arthritis issues. So what are the disadvantages? Why wouldn't we do this in everybody? Well, there's a couple, um, you know, interests. For, for, as I mentioned, if you have arthritis in other compartments of your knee, we really can't. Um, there is somewhat of a risk for progression of arthritis in other parts and potential need for total knee replacement. So if there's any, you know, significant damage in another compartment of the knee, oftentimes it's not the right uh, choice. Um, if you look at the, the statistics, there's a higher, higher likelihood of need for further surgery, meaning basically conversion of knee replace to total knee replacement. Um, if somebody has inflammatory arthritis, as I mentioned before, like rheumatoid arthritis, it's not indicated uh, because of the potential additional damage to the joint. And um, if they have ligament damage, so for instance, somebody had an ACL tear, uh, if their knee is, is not, it doesn't have a functional ACL or they had other significant ligament damage, um, that won't really work very well for them. Now, there are, the caveat to that is there are situations in which you can do a ligament reconstruction. You can do an ACL reconstruction and do a partial knee replacement. And so there are situations in which that may be appropriate. Um, if somebody has a lot of stiffness or contractures or a lot of alignment issues with their knee, it's not appropriate either. So how do we determine this? Well, the first thing is, and this is very important. So physical exam is actually extremely important when we're trying to decide if a partial knee replacement is appropriate. Um, I really like to see if the person's knee can get all the way straight, how their ligaments balance on, from a, a physical standpoint when I'm actually examining them. I can look at their alignment overall. 
um, you know, that that's really important for, for determining things. We also, of course, look at x-rays. Uh, sometimes we'll have to get other advanced imaging, MRI, CT, and we check labs to check and see, okay, is this person an appropriate candidate for surgery? So how do we do this? Um, on the left there is just uh, a picture of uh, some partial knee replacement components. Um, you can see there's kind of like a, a little metal uh, cap that goes on the end of the femur bone in this situation. And then there's a little tray. And as I mentioned, that little plastic liner in between. And then you can kind of see how that lines up with the x-ray there. Um, now, let me show you um, some things that really made a difference in my practice. And I think in general, um, you know, really changed the standard of care for partial knee replacement. And that's robotics. So robotic surgery uh, for partial knee replacement has been out now um, over 10 years. If you look at um, how this has changed things, what's really valuable is you can in real time get feedback about where these components are gonna go and how this is gonna change the alignment of the knee or, or just look and make sure that it's not changing the alignment in, in a uh, significant way. That was one of the major issues with um, doing knee replacements before so, uh, robotics with partial knee replacements is making sure that you're not putting components in too tight or changing the alignment in such a way that would load it in a way that would cause it to fail. And with the robotic systems that are available now, this has really improved our ability to make sure that things are gonna turn out the way we want them to. Um, this is a picture of me in uh, our OR with uh, my team. And this is kind of a really important factor in this is I work with a great group of people who this is just what they do and they know what they're doing. Um, you can see in the background there, um, the guy with the red hat is one of the guys who helps out with the robotic system. And the, the thing right next to him is the robotic arm. So there's actually multiple pieces to the robotic system. Um, it's really cool equipment that really allows us to, to do some pretty uh, neat things. And like I said, it really has changed our ability to be uh, really accurate with how we're doing these things and make sure we're getting a good result. So for instance, here's a picture of kind of a software, a capture of the software screen where we're looking real time before we do anything to the knee, we take some readings and kind of map things out in the operating room and match that up to a CT scan in this case where you can see, okay, where are we gonna put these components and how is that gonna change the, um, the way that the knee's gonna function? And we can look at that information real time in surgery. And um, that's, that really allows us to be really accurate when we're actually doing the surgery itself. Um, you, can, you get real time information and that matches then up to using the robotic arm to be extremely accurate with removing bone and doing the things we need to do. And so as we do the surgery, we can get the components exactly where we need. We can see exactly what bone is, is being resected and, and, and make sure we're doing a great job and make sure we have a really well-balanced component in that situation. So some other things that are uh, you know, somewhat unique, but uh, just really important with, with about um, partial knee replacement. Most of the time, it's the same day surgery. I would, you know, for the most part, as long as the patient is fairly healthy, and, and most people who are a candidate for a partial knee replacement are going to be fairly healthy um, and are, you know, ambulatory, can get up. If they have a good support system, we can get them home the same day, which is pretty neat. Uh, patients do better and they prefer to go home rather than stay in the hospital if they don't have to. Um, and honestly, I will tell you, like, people tend to just bounce back quicker if they do. And we do a lot of things to kind of help support you and make sure you're going to be set up for success at home ahead of time. That's kind of been the, the key to same day uh, knee replacement surgery is making sure that the patient is ready ahead of time. So there's, there's no surprises afterward. Um, you know, right after surgery, we want you up and walking. We try to get you up and go to the bathroom, you know, within a couple hours of surgery, just so we can get you moving. Oftentimes you will need a brace or walker or crutches just to kind of start off. But um, in the in the recovery area, we want to make sure we get you up and moving right away. We start with physical therapy, uh, usually within a couple of days, if that. And then gradually, just as you continue to improve, we start increasing your activity level. And so it can be pretty quick to get back to those activities of daily living and moving around your house. And then hopefully getting back to, you know, full activities pretty quickly within six to 12 weeks. Um, so how do people do? Well, if you look at the, there's a lot of registry data. Uh, there's a lot of information available about partial knee replacements that goes back a long ways. If you look at uh, some of the historical data, uh, things have gotten a lot better, but there's been significant improvement in people's pain scores. They do very well in terms of improving their quality of life. And that's across the board. The most recent data, there's been, you know, 10 year survival rates. This was kind of always the knock with partial knee replacements is, is they would, you know, only last for a period of time. But like I said, with the robotic, um, uh, kind of changes and just kind of the changes in the technology, 
the survival rates are, you know, can approach 95% plus, meaning that like at 10 years, 95% of the people who had a knee replacement, a partial knee replacement, you know, are still have their partial knee replacement, haven't had to be converted to a total knee replacement, are doing well. In general, and I would tell you this is uh, true in my practice, patients who have a partial knee replacement, they do have a faster recovery. As I mentioned, it's a little bit less invasive. Um, you know, they can usually get moving faster um, and they can return to their activities of daily living uh, a little bit quicker. Um, so now we'll kind of go through some questions and if there's anything else that uh, comes up and, and you have any other questions, you can feel free to reach out anytime. Um, you know, hopefully this is something that was you know, helpful to you. Uh, you know, many patients, this may or may not be appropriate, but I definitely think it's worth, you know, inquiring about if you, if you have any questions, um, you know, is it something that's appropriate for you? It can be a life-changing uh, surgery for people. And it's something that I think is really going to, you know, help a lot more people as the technology continues to improve. Um, and there are cases being newer and newer uh, robotic changes and, and software packages. And also just things that are coming out that are helping us, uh, you know, even improve people's recovery uh, speed even better. Some of the things we're able to do now in terms of pain relief and get people uh, moving and, and up and out of surgery um, quicker are really uh, changing the way that uh, we've been working. And we have uh, more and more success and I'm just more and more excited about it as things go. So thank you very much. And we'll go through some questions now. Okay. All right. So first question, this is a great question, actually. Can I do a partial knee replacement as a step to a total knee? So I will tell you, um, sometimes that's the case. Now, my goal when we're doing a partial knee replacement is not for that just to be like a temporary fix. You know, if we're doing it, we really want that to be something that's going to last, going to work well. Um, sometimes there are situations where, as like the first patient that I mentioned, that 51-year-old who had pain with let's say that person was even younger. Let's say they're 41 years old. They have end-stage arthritis in the, in the inside part of their knee. You know, they, it's, there's really no good answer for them. And we do a partial knee replacement. You know, that person may end up needing a, a total knee replacement in 15 to 20 years or, or at some point. And so sometimes that's, a, that's the case. And um, it, it may be something that can help as, as kind of a, a stopover. Um, good question here. How long do injections last and can they prevent a knee replacement? So as I mentioned, injections help treat arthritis symptoms. I have patients I've been treating with injections for years and they do great and they haven't needed anything else. You know, I'll see some people every six months for their gel injections and they're happy. And I'm hoping those people never need a re knee replacement. Um, in terms of preventing arthritis from getting worse or preventing arthritis altogether, the injections have never really been shown to do that. They treat the symptoms. Sometimes they're extremely uh, effective and sometimes not as much. Um, so how can I prevent surgery? I have arthritis. Can I change my diet or repair arthritis? So th that's one bad thing about arthritis is, and that's what I kind of mentioned is we do not have a cure for right now. We can't make it, you know, go backwards in terms of some of the things that people are looking into this from a very basic science level in terms of research, trying to kind of reprogram, you know, the, the health of the knee. And there's never really been nothing shown to be extremely effective yet in terms of uh, injections or medications you can take. Um, you know, preventing symptoms from arthritis, diet is actually, you know, can be very important with that. Um, for instance, uh, foods that cause inflammation have been shown to cause uh, more arthritis related pain too. So think a lot like sugary foods or really high carbohydrate foods. And sometimes that can be kind of uh, specific to a patient too. So some people, um, you know, experience symptoms a lot more significantly with certain foods than others. And it may be something to, to explore. Uh, next question, if I'm a runner, can I run the fly and pig again? So if you had a partial knee replacement, I would tell you that in general, like and this would not be recommended to run probably a marathon. Um, I do have some patients who run on partial knee replacements um, or are very active. Um, you know, I would tell you that in general, like that level of running, the amount of running you have to do for the mileage, you know, I would, if I, if I have somebody who's still running marathons, I would try to put off doing any kind of surgery on their knee for as long as possible. And there may be some other options that may be, you know, appropriate. Um, you know, once you get down the level, you're a little less, uh, you're a little less uh, physical with it. Then, it, then you kind of maybe more interest, more uh, appropriate to do arthroplasty type of surgery. Um, so here's here's another person, person who um, is in their 30s with having a history of multiple ACL injuries. Should they consider a knee replacement right now? Once again, 
I would tell you if you're in your thirties to try to, we want to put things off as long as possible in that situation. Um, that could be a very difficult situation. Sometimes it comes to surgery. I would tell you that the longer we can put off arthroplasty surgery uh, in somebody who's in their thirties, the better um, because of the fact of just the longevity of the implants lasting. You more than likely have had multiple ACL injuries. You don't just have isolated arthritis in one part of your knee. And so the chance of having um, you know, being able to do just a partial knee replacement and then convert it to a total knee replacement is lower. And a lot of times in our ACL patients, if they do develop significant arthritis later on, it can be more diffuse throughout their knee. They end up needing a knee replacement, but we do a lot of stuff to kind of help treat that arthritis before it comes to surgery. And um, you know, that's critical. So there's a lot of things we can do. There's some different injections we can do to kind of keep things going. Uh, I would try to avoid surgery for as long as possible. Um, so uh, this is kind of a, a random or a um, um, generalized question. Should I be concerned and consult a physician? You know, I think if you have concerns about your your joint health, you're having a lot of pain symptoms. It's always a pro you know I'm happy to see people just to talk about um, their you know their um, their their overall you know condition and just where, where they're at. We don't have to be talking just to do something. You know, sometimes it can be just a discussion about hey, I have some some pain every once in a while. Should I be concerned about this? So. You know, yeah, I think that's worth looking out. Question here is, I've had a partial knee replacement. Can I have another one? Um, I'll tell you it's rare. If it wears out, most of the time you're going to have progression of arthritis in some other part of your knee. Um, if there was an acute failure or something along those lines, and you know, sometimes a revision partial knee replacement could be um, appropriate, but that's rare. Most of the time, if somebody has had a partial knee replacement, if they need additional surgery, it's probably going to need a total, be a total knee replacement. Um, have you seen certain jobs or activities linked to deteriorating knees? I certainly uh, would tell you that if you have a job or have had, you know, activity that leads to um, certain injuries, then definitely. So for instance, you know, if somebody was like, you know, had an injury at work and they tore their meniscus or something along those lines, that could definitely lead to arthritis. I've had many patients tell me over the years that standing on hard surfaces, I can kind of uh, uh, also uh, attest to this myself, standing on hard surfaces makes their knees feel worse. It increases their pain. You know, most of the time these people have some arthritis as it is. Um, you know, I think I always uh, tell people to kind of make sure they're paying attention to their shoe wear. Sometimes that can be uh, beneficial in just helping with arthritis symptoms. Um, you know, but a lot of really, you know, and, and honestly, uh, activities where somebody's doing a lot of heavy lifting or a lot of you know physical activity where they're really beating up their, their body um, could lead to arthritis. How long is a procedure for a partial knee replacement and do they have to stay at the hospital? Um, so... The surgery itself takes usually a little bit less than an hour for my working time. Um, usually the patient is back in the room for a little bit longer than that, kind of getting set up. And then uh, there's a little bit of time when they're waking up and coming out. So um, most of the time the, the patient's at the hospital for you know four to six hours from you know getting there early, getting, making sure they're okay, getting set up and then recovering. Um, do you have to stay at the hospital? Uh, no. So most of the time, I would say 90 plus percent of patients with uh, knee replacement surgery in my practice do not stay at the hospital. They go home the same day. Um, is surgery required and was likelihood of making a full recovery? So it's not necessarily required. It all depends on all those factors we kind of talked about. The you know, symptoms you're experiencing, um, you know, what things look like from a physical standpoint with your knee, with exam and, and imaging. Um, and hopefully, yeah, there, there's a good, like we talked about in terms of patient satisfaction scores, very good for knee replacement surgery, um, for partial knee replacements uh, in particular. And um, like I said, a long, a long standing, uh, a lot of data showing that there's good longevity with uh, partial knee replacement as well. If both knees are in need, how, how, how can I schedule one procedure after another? Or how soon can I uh, schedule one procedure after another? Great question. So, and I have, to, I have patients ask me this all the time, can I do both knees at the same time? If we're trying to do same day surgery, which most of the time we are, that's not a good idea. Most of the time, if somebody has surgery on both knees at the same time, you know, they're really laid up and it's a much harder recovery. Um, I usually want to make sure my patients are at least six weeks out. I see them, you know, six weeks out before we schedule their other one. And the reason being is because I want to make sure that they are recovered enough that they can undergo surgery on their other knee uh, and, and use their, you know, recently operated on knee to help them get around. And it usually takes about six weeks to make sure that they're going to be able to do that. Um, so oftentimes we'll kind of watch and just kind of tentatively make sure things are okay. And then oftentimes we see them back at their six week post-op visit 
they looking good. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move forward with your other knee some point in the near future. Um, how does the patient need to prepare for surgery? That's something we go over in detail uh, in our office and make sure the patients are um, are really you know educated on this process. You know, we we go through a few things. We make sure we go through all your medications with you. We we actually have you meet with the physical therapist ahead of time to make sure you're aware of how things are going to be afterward. We make sure you kind of go through your house and. Uh, make sure that all the obstacles that you know could make things difficult for you are taken care of ahead of time. Um, we go through some different things that you'll do immediately before surgery, and it's a process we do all the time. Is anyone not a candidate for surgery? Is their minimum age? There's not exactly a minimum age. Like I said, there's definitely some patients who, you know, because of their issues, may require a surgery because nothing's working for them and and they just have really significant symptoms. I would tell you, I, I really try to put off arthroplasty surgery as long as possible for people under 50, uh, just because I want it to last as long as possible and maybe forever. Um, that said, there are definitely patients, you know, not infrequently in their 40s who end up with a partial knee replacement. Um, you know, there are certain situations where people even younger than that may need something, but we really try to put it off as much as possible. Uh, how many uh, weeks of physical therapy and how long before someone can drive? Great question. So, um, the driving question is, is kind of contingent on which knee for one thing. So if somebody's getting their left knee done, as long as they're off medications that may inhibit their ability to drive and they can get in and out of a car and they're doing okay in terms of mobilizing on their own, um, you know, I, if it's their left knee, I let them drive. Um, with the right knee, we really want to make sure you're kind of meeting certain physical therapy goals. Oftentimes that means kind of walking, uh, without significant assistance and same thing with the medications. Um, that takes a little bit longer. I would tell you on average, I would I would guess with some of my right knee patients, it ends up being about six weeks, um, sometimes faster, sometimes longer. Um, and uh, in terms of amount of physical therapy, uh, that varies person to person as well. I've had some people who after you know six weeks are, are kicking butt and doing great and they're ready to move on. Some people, you know, it's a little bit longer than that. And I would say on average, um, you know, most of my patients are doing some therapy out to about 12 weeks. We have some patients that need longer than that. And it can even take, you know, six months to a year to get your full recovery for everything to get stronger, to get back to where it's going to be and, and to really settle and make sure you're where you need to be from a recovery standpoint. And that's the end of the questions with that. I just want to say thanks again for, um, you know, tuning in. Hopefully this was helpful. If there's any other questions, feel free to reach out anytime. Uh, feel free to make an appointment. Uh, I'm happy to talk to anybody about all these issues. Thanks. Cool. There.